Done, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, next is sodium thiosulfate, Na2S2O3.5. So the compound is not that important. Okay. Uh, this reaction you must take care of. A Springs reaction. Sodium sulfide with iodine and Na2SO3. Sodium thiosulfate and NaI it forms. Okay. Uh, sometimes the question is, uh, they ask that what we use, uh, like what compound we obtain in a Springs reaction. So we use sodium thiosulfate we use to prepare from this, okay? And it is a salt of unstable acid that is thiosulfuric acid, H2S2O3. Only one reaction, this is important. A spring reaction, you must remember. Used to prepare sodium thiosulfate. Okay. Another method also we have, but not that important, like sulfur with NaOH forms this. Na2S sodium sulfide with sulfur forms Na2S5, pentasulfide. Heating effects, this reaction is important. Like I've already told you, temperature dependent reaction in inorganic is very important. Pentahydrate form when heated at 215 degrees Celsius. Okay, roughly temperature you must remember, 215 degrees Celsius forms thiosulfate and water dehydration takes place, water molecules goes out. Further, you heat it at 23 degrees Celsius, then form sodium sulfate and Na2S5, okay? Acidification, if you add acid to the solution, then sulfur dioxide gas evolves and sulfur precipitates. So what you have to memorize, sodium thiosulfate on acidification liberates SO2, sodium diox sulfur dioxide. Reduction with chlorine water forms sodium sulfate. It is not that important, okay? This complex color you must remember. Like sodium thiosulfate with FeCl3 forms a complex of iron of purple color and FeCl2 of green color we have. Alkaline earth metal, it's group two, six elements. Physical properties of these elements are electronic configuration we know, outermost configuration is NS2. Atomic radius increases down the group. We all know, don't need to, no need to write on this. Density decreases down the group. Because atomic radius increases, so density decreases, okay? Another thing is what density of alkali metals are larger than those of alkali metals. Left to right, we are going. Density is more than to that of alkali metals. This is due to a stronger metallic. Okay, melting and boiling point. The boiling point of these elements are low. The melting point is also low. But if you compare the boiling point and melting point from first group, that is alkali metals, it is more than that. Reason is what? They have two valence electron, which may participate in metallic bonding. And in alkali metal, we have only one. Hence, group two elements are harder and have higher cohesive energy and have much higher melting and boiling point than alkali metals. Okay, melting point order you see, beryllium maximum and magnesium is the minimum down the group if you go. So we have an irregular trend over here, must copy this down, melting point and boiling point order. Boiling point of strontium and barium is different here. Wherever you see irregular trend or some exceptions, you must remember that. Okay, ionization energy, if you see, it is obviously 
uh, the ionization energy of alkaline earth metal is more than to that of alkali metal because of stable configuration, S2 configuration. But when you compare this with P block elements, then the alkaline earth metals, because of their large size, because left to right, if you go size decreases, large size have fairly low values of ionization energies as compared to the P block elements. Okay. However, within the group, the ionization energy decreases as atomic number increases down the group, you go size increases, atomic number decreases. Ionization energy decreases, electropositive character increases, right? So down the group, if you see, ionization energy decreases, electropositive character increases, because tendency to lose electron will be more. Increases, electropositive character increases means metallic nature also increases because tendency to lose electron is more also increases. Okay. Oxidation number, it shows plus two oxidation state, we all know. And one more thing, it is less electropositive than alkali metals. Because of because of higher ionization energy. Okay, the oxidation state is plus two, and M plus two ion possess a higher degree of hydration. Then M plus two ions are extremely hydrated, extensively hydrated, and forms this complex a hydrated ion. Right. So first of all, what we require? We have to convert M into M plus two. So for this, we require ionization energy, IE1 and IE2. And then if you dissolve this in water, then hydration energy evolves, okay? So total energy here is this plus this for this hydration process. Okay, reducing properties, as we go down the group, the metallic nature increases, tendency to lose electron is more, and hence the reducing property also increases. You see, down the group, reducing properties increases. Okay. Flame coloration, this you remember. However, it is not that important. Brick red, strontium crimson red, and barium apple green. This also you see beryllium and magnesium do not impart any color to flame because of the small size and high ionization energy. Chemical properties, alkaline earth metals are quite reactive due to their low ionization energy and high electropositive character, the reactivity of these elements increases with increase in atomic number, like ionization energy decreases. But it is less reactive than alkali metals. We know the reason, ionization energy. Hydrides of this, except beryllium, this is important here. You see, except beryllium, all alkaline earth metals forms hydrides of MH2 type. On heating directly with H2, M plus H2 gives MH2, where M is not equals to beryllium. Always, if you want to choose one, uh, you know, different behavior of an element in a group, you should go with the first element because it shows abnormal properties. How do you prepare beryllium? Beryllium is prepared by action of LiAlH4 on BeCl2. Direct hydration we cannot do. Direct we cannot allow beryllium to react with H2. It won't form hydrides in that case. But if you want to prepare hydrides, we can take the chloride of beryllium and with LiAlH4. Forms LiCl, AlCl3 and BeH2. We know these hydrides, BeH2 and MgH2 are covalent, while other are hydrides. We know this fact, S block hydrides are ionic in nature, except beryllium and magnesium, okay? The ionic hydrides of calcium, strontium, beryllium, liberate H2 at anode and metal at cathode. Hydrogen liberates at uh, 
<clears throat> anode and metal at cathode the stability of hydrides decreases from from beryllium to barium because the size increases so bond length increases stability decreases okay hydrides having higher reactivity for water dissolves easily and produce hydrogen gas okay so hydrides dissolves in water and evolves hydrogen gas here this is the reaction we have here cas2 plus h2o gives this caoh hold twice what is this compound you know the name of this compound yes what is the name of this compound hydrolith okay important in this name also okay sometimes they ask this question that uh, when hydrolith dissolve in water or cold water which gas evolves hydrogen gas evolves okay keep that in mind hydrolith is cah2 all these alkaline metals reacts with water and evolves hydrogen gas reaction is given over here hydrogen gas evolves h2 gas evolves magnesium decomposes hot water but it also evolves h2 this also evolves h2 so hydrogen liberates in all this beryllium does not react with water important this one is beryllium hydrides are you know strong is difficult to break the bond hence it does not react with water order of reactivity see beryllium does not react okay so beryllium we are not writing down here to compare reactivity molecule must reacts with another molecule the reaction itself is not taking place so we are not considering beryllium here it's not like we should write a beryllium in the in here also if you have this option and this option till here then we'll go with this okay don't get confused over here okay that's a more precise one because beryllium does not react reaction with oxygen all alkaline earth metals burns in oxygen to form oxides beryllium magnesium and calcium form oxides whereas barium and strontium forms peroxide okay and that's why we also say tendency to form peroxide increases down the group the hydroxides of these elements can be formed either by dissolving metal oxides in water or by reaction of elements with water like we have over here this reaction so we can also use metal oxides or simply metal in water important property is beh2 is amphoteric beh2 is amphoteric hydroxides of magnesium calcium strontium and barium are basic are basic in nature and their strength from magnesium to barium increases right means these hydrides uh, sorry oxides are hydroxides are basic in nature and basicity increases down the group why it has more tendency as you go down the group it has more tendency to release hydroxide ion because of larger size okay these hydroxides are less soluble in water as compared to the alkali metal hydroxides okay not that important solubility of the hydroxides in water increases with increase in atomic number buh2 mgoh hold twice are almost insoluble why it is insoluble so lattice enthalpy is more than hydration enthalpy lattice enthalpy is more than and why is that so why lattice enthalpy is more covalent it has you know, if you see the covalent character obviously it has more covalent character size is also small so because of that also it has high lattice energy so water molecule cannot penetrate into the lattice of this hence it is insoluble right so all these uh, you know factors we have covalent character high lattice energy right next 
कार्बोनेट्स कार्बोनेट्स ऑफ एल्केलियम अर्थ मेटल्स आर इनसॉलेबल इन वाटर इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टीज दिस वन इज कार्बोनेट्स आर इनसॉलेबल दिस कैन बी प्रेसिपिटेटेड बाय एडिशन ऑफ सोडियम और अमोनियम कार्बोनेट सोल्यूशन टू द सोल्यूशन ऑफ सॉल्ट ऑफ दीज मेटल्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी टेक कैल्शियम क्लोराइड एंड सोडियम कार्बोनेट फॉर्म सी एस सीओ थ्री प्रेसिपिटेड एंड एन एस सी एल ऑल कार्बोनेट्स डिकम्पोज ऑन हीटिंग टू गिव कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड मेटल ऑक्साइड एम ओ एंड सीओ टू एज द एटोमिक नंबर इंक्रीजेस हा इट शुड बी एन ए टू सीओ थ्री टू इज मिसिंग ओवर यू एन ए टू सीओ थ्री यस ओके as the atomic number increases the stability of carbonates towards the heat increases okay and why this happens basically as the atomic number increases so we have caco3 beco3 mgco3 baco3 stability of these carbonates increases as we go down the group reason for this so it's that you will try if you have to look at polarizing problem yes stability down the group increases what is it high polarizing path no sir like there's a rule right for polyatomic and monoatomic one of them favors polarizing power other one no uh yeah you can say like that also but we usually what happens carbonates uh sulfates uh we consider these as larger anion okay co3 2 minus so4 2 minus these are larger anions so we have the logic don't think about bond length if you think about bond length then down the group you know bond length increases then stability should decrease but that is not happening over here because bond length is not the major criteria the criteria is the you know the ions which stabilizes these anions so we have a uh, we have a concept here that we say that higher cat like larger cations can stabilize larger anions okay and carbonate sulfates are uh, larger anions we have okay so if you go down the group the size of cation increases and hence the stability of carbonates also increases reason is larger cations can stabilize larger anions okay hence you see the atomic number increases the stability of carbonates towards the heat also increases okay beryllium carbonate is unstable and can be kept only in atmosphere of co2 okay it is also important beryllium carbonate can be kept only in the atmosphere of co2 okay sulfates you see forms by dissolving in acid h2so4 carbonates also if you dissolve it forms sulfates properties of sulfates are what sulfates of alkaline earth metals are less soluble and the corresponding salts of alkali metals right sulfates are less soluble than that of the alkali metals their solubility decreases down the group in water the solubility decreases down the group because stability increases on heating it it evolves sulfur dioxide the thermal stability of sulfates increases on moving down the group thermal stability down the group increases from top to bottom right same logic i said this now that carbonates and sulfates are uh, considered to be larger anion which is stabilized by larger cation hence the thermal stability of sulfates increases on moving down the group from top to bottom lithopone is a mixture of baso4 and zns many times they have asked this question is there any use for this lithopone sorry So does this lithopone have any use? Uh, yeah, we must have some use of it. That use is not that important. Generally, they ask lithopone is a mixture of what? 
like BASO four and zero is the composition you must remember. Okay. Okay. Done. Copy. Okay. Alter didn't get you. Yes, either tell me. Okay, uh, sulfates of alkaline at metals are more stable than thermal stability, sir. Are more stable than the sulfates of group one metals. In when we compare with respect to thermal stability, sir, I wanted to know. A thermal stability of sulfates of group one and group two. Yes, sir. Which is more greater? See, left to right, if you go, the size decreases. Yes, sir. Correct. Size decreases. Hence, the stability. If you see, alkali metals will have high, slightly higher stability than alkaline metals. Okay, sir. Yeah, lithopone. Yeah, you can say it is also you know used as pent leather industry. Also, we use it. Uses are not that important here for lithopone. Composition is more important. Okay. Okay, nitrides. You see, alkaline earth metal burns in nitrogen to form nitrides of N three and two type. Right, and these nitrides are ionic in nature. Direct combination. Nitrides when dissolved in water forms hydroxide ammonia released in this. Carbides reaction you see uh, many a times you have seen this reaction, very important reaction. We get methane here, Be2C, CaC to dissolve in a, a like water it forms uh, ethene, okay. so acetylene C2H2. Okay, so Be2C helps methane on hydrolysis, whereas carbides of other metals. Is acetylene. Okay, this line you must copy this down. Carbides for the question, both for exam. J also they have asked this. MC two type carbides group two elements forms. Done. Okay. So. Uh, Carbides of group two group, uh, group two metals are ionic carbides, ionic carbides, which may be in a methanoid on acetylide or allylide. Uh, like we can have anything, ions name it is methanoid when one carbon atom, two carbon atom and allylide we have here over here. So BeCO two is methanoid because it evolves methane, gives methane. Calcium carbide, acetylide, because it evolves acetylene C2H2. Magnesium carb carbide, it calls allylide. Allylide reacts with water to gives allene. Okay, CS3 C triple bond C. Methyl acetylene. This uh, you know they have asked this one and this one also. I guess they have asked. Neat and JE both. Okay, it dissociates like two Mg two plus plus C three four minus like this. Same thing. Okay. BEH two is covalent. MgH two. It is partially covalent and partially ionic. And remaining hydrides are ionic in nature. BEH two exists in in polymeric form. 
in which we have hydrogen bridging. This bond you see, it is three centered two electron bonded. Why it is three centered two electron bond? Because BEH2, the bond is this. And it has vacant orbital, beryllium, right? 2p vacant orbital we have here. So what happens, this two electron, sigma electron, it donates into this vacant p orbital and this two sigma electron donates into this. It does not come out of the orbital, means here we have a tri-junction, right? Orbital of this, orbital of this, and orbital of this. These three will overlap and this two electron is now distributed among three atoms, two beryllium and one hydrogen atom, two beryllium and one hydrogen atom. That's why we have three center, three nucleus, one, two, and three, two beryllium nucleus and one hydrogen nucleus. And among these three nucleus, we have only two electrons present. Hence, the bond is called three center, two electron bond. In vapor phase, BH2 exists like this. This entered two electron bond and all the molecules are combined like this. Right? So this is we have the vapor phase molecules, two molecules we have here. If you have solid phase, then we have a polymeric structure. So keep that in mind. In vapor phase, beryllium hydrides exist as a, as a dimer in which two molecules combines, but in solid state, it exists in polymeric form. That is this structure. All beryllium is sp3 hybridized here. Must remember this very important. And here it is sp2 hybridized. Correct. So in vapor phase, hybridization is sp2. In solid phase, it is sp3. Halides. Two group metals when heated with halogens gives halides. Beryllium halides, BEF2 and BECL2 are covalent. Due to the small size, here the covalent nature is. BEF2, BECL2. Due to Fajan's rule, hence have comparatively low melting point and boiling point. The chlorides and fluorides of other metals of the group are ionic solids. BCL2 in the solid state is polymeric containing chains. Okay, BCL2 in solid state is polymeric. So we have similar kind of structure like we seen in uh, BEH2. In the vapor phase, at higher temperature, BCL2 exists as the monomer, which is BCL2 itself. This also you copy. Solubility of halides in water decreases down the group from calcium to barium. BES to vapor phase, C. Vapor phase we have Dimer, right? If you look at the configuration of this, 1s to 2s to 2p is vacant, vacant. Right? So 2p orbitals will overlap on both sides. Subcell, we can say 2p, and in 2p, which orbital we have that we cannot say. Here you see. No, sir, I meant two uh, orbitals of P. Yes, you see, hybridization is sp2, right? So one s and two p orbital overlaps. So in vapor phase. What? Your voice is breaking. Sorry, triple. sorry in vapor ah. phase. Ah, this is the vapor phase. See, I'll tell you it. Beryllium has four electrons. 
So one is two, two is two, and it combines with two hydrogen. B is two you consider now, right? Combines with two hydrogen. So this one electron will be here and one will be in two p one, like this in excited state, and the other two or p orbitals are vacant. Correct. So when this two orbitals forms sp because here we have dimer, so this two electrons it donates into the p orbital, but in the bonding what happens? We have one s one p which has one one electron and one p also which has suppose this two p x it is two p y I am taking, which has no electron vacant p orbital, it takes part in hybridization. And forms sp two hybridized orbital. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it. Sorry, I got confused. So I thought bottom one is vapor phase. I meant to ask the bottom structure, sir. Oh, acha. This one you are talking about. Yes, sir. Acha. This is solid state. Acha. In this also it is same. You see, we have four bonds now. So one s and three p will take part in, uh, you know, hybridization. So one h and one h. One C. Uh, suppose this is H here. I'll take the middle one. This is the actual molecule. You understood this one. And we have two sp3 hybridized orbital here. So this electron donates into this, and this electron from here it donates into this. Two times the same thing is happening. Okay, sir. Understood. Correct. Yeah. One second, Pradyut. Carbide. I'll just go back. This one. Yes, sir. Okay. Got it, sir. Thank you. Okay, so these are the questions I have taken from bunch of classes module. Okay, only few questions, but important one. Okay, so I did not get the unsolved one; otherwise, I would have taken that. But yes, we can go like we can do the practice for this kind of questions. You see, uh, NaOH gives disproportionation reaction with what? Reaction is given with sulfur. It reacts. You see, it forms sodium thiosulfate sulfide and H two. Right, we have seen this reaction just now, and this further reacts with sulfur, converts into Na2S5. Okay, with excess pentasulfide forms, right? Pentasulfide forms. So disproportionation reaction with sulfur it gives. Okay, CO2 gas along with solid Y is obtained when solid when sodium salt X is heated. X is again obtained. When CO2 gas is passed into Y, X and Y R. Okay, so we know what all things can uh, eliminate CO2 gas. We can have carbonate or bicarbonate. Two things we can think of, right? CO2 gas along with solid Y is obtained when sodium salt is heated, right? So we have sodium salt. Suppose sodium bicarbonate. We have options are given. Sodium bicarbonate when it is heated forms carbonate. H2O and CO2 goes out, right? And we also know when this uh, two combines with carbonates, it comes, it forms metal hydrogen carbonate, that is NaHCO3 or any metal hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so that's what the question is. Answer for this question would be NaHCO3 and Na2CO3. Okay, this is also factual. You see, number fourteen. Which of the following is used as barium meal for getting the X-ray spectrum of the human digestive system? Okay, BaSO four is both insoluble in water and opaque to uh, X-rays, and hence is used to get X-rays spectrum of the digestive system. Okay, barium sulfate is correct over here. Potassium is kept in, kept in kerosene. 
why it is in kerosene reason because it is highly reactive okay alkali metals are highly reactive metals they react with alcohols water ammonia like the reaction given hence we kept this in kerosene okay to reduce the reactivity of potassium yeah that's what we can say that is also we can say highly reactive so it can reacts at normal condition also normal temperature also okay oh it's the same thing i have taken anyways this one we see which liberates ammonia when treated with okay CaCN2 Mg3N2 and Li3N all nitrides reacts with H2 to liberate ammonia okay so nitrides on reaction with water gives ammonia this also is a nit is a nitride reaction with water gives ammonia calcium cyanamide on hydrolysis gives nh3 with water produce carbonate and nh3 hence the answer would be all here the cation which gives yellow precipitate with potassium chromate yellow precipitate with potassium chromate okay this is also factual barium gives a yellow precipitate of barium chromate this definition this uh, color of this you must remember bacro4 it is yellow in color okay acha so k2cro4 plus ba2 plus gives barium chromate and 2k plus yellow precipitate of it Na plus is larger than Mg two plus iron. S minus two iron is larger than Cl minus iron, which is the following will be least soluble in water. Sodium chloride, sodium sulfide, magnesium chloride, and magnesium sulfide. Reason is you see the magnesium sulfide has higher lattice energy. We have seen this higher lattice energy lower the solubility. out of the four combination possible the lattice energy of mgs bivalent cation ionic solid is higher than those of na2s mgcl2 and nacl right so the one which has the higher lattice energy it is difficult for water molecule to penetrate into its lattice and hence it is least uh, soluble right so answer for this one is magnesium sulfide MgS, MgCl two, NaCl, and Na two S. These are the four compounds. Just a second. And write down these four possibilities of the compounds like magnesium sulfide, magnesium chloride, and the data is given. Na plus iron is larger than Mg two plus S two minus is larger than this. Okay, so based on the size which is given already, we can compare which one is has the you know like least lattice energy or maximum lattice energy, and accordingly we can decide. 
Okay. Okay. So these are the few questions. I think one of the slide I have missed. Few questions. Okay, fine, just let it be. I'll share some PDF on this, okay? Some uh, PDF we have, I have for uh, uh, this thing, four, five doc file I have, okay? I'll share that after the class. You can just go through it. Answer key is also given into that. Uh, and solution also if it requires, okay? So we can finish, you can finish that on your own for S block, okay? So we'll share with you, okay? Next, we are going to start uh, biomolecules, okay? All these chapters, you see one questions, uh, like mostly you will get from this chapter also, biomolecules and polymers. So all these chapters are, you know, uh, uh, we cannot say it is not important. You never know what questions they're gonna get. You're gonna get here. So like whatever theory is there that you should know, you never know like which portions they'll ask, okay? So questions definitely you solve, you'll get the idea of which one is, you know, important topic or not. But theory you must go through for the entire chapter, okay? Like you see, carbohydrates, it is nothing but biomolecules. Okay, so as the name suggests, you see, it is the hydrates of carbon. We know it uh, initially the definition was given like this it is the hydrates of carbon and the general formula is cx h2oy which was later on proved to be wrong because there are many compounds which follows this particular you know form but are not biomolecules like for example any example of this could you give me lactic acid what is the formula for lactic acid lactic acid The formula is CH3, CH, COOH, and here we have OH. Chiral carbon, right, optically active. Lactic acid, this also we can represent in this form, that is C3, H2O3. Same form. It is a carbohydrates. So, okay, these are not, lactic acid is not a carbohydrates, but the formula representation is same. Similarly, formaldehyde, HCHO, obviously it is not a carbohydrate, but the formula representation is same. We can represent it this way. So obviously this definition was wrong later on. And later on, we have given a new definition that these are the polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone, which can be broken down into, into a smaller polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone through hydrolysis, okay? So carbohydrates, this is the classification, but the definition of carbohydrates is what? These are the polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone, which can also be broken down into another, uh, like a smaller polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone through hydrolysis, okay? Like we have glucose, fructose, other examples we have. So later on, this carbohydrates, also classified into different categories, okay? We have monosaccharides, we have oligosaccharides, we have polysaccharides. This term based on the number of monosaccharides we get on hydrolysis, right? Like monosaccharides are those carbohydrates which cannot be broken down into small carbohydrates by hydrolysis. No hydrolysis is possible for this, right? General formula is this. Oligosaccharides are what? These includes two to 10 monosaccharides linked together. Means when you hydrolyze this, you'll get two to 10 monosaccharides in this after hydrolysis. Polysaccharides in this on hydrolysis will get more than 10 units of monosaccharides, greater than 10. So based on the number of uh, monosaccharides we are getting after hydrolysis, we have done this classification, mono, oligo, and polysaccharides. Okay, monosaccharides. The examples are what? Achha, one more thing I'll tell you here. In oligosaccharides, what happens? 
just a second. In oligosaccharides, we have two to ten, right? So if this oligosaccharides gives you two monosaccharides. If it gives two monosaccharides, then it is called as disaccharides. Okay, it's called as disaccharides. And then if it is three trisaccharides, four tetrasaccharides, etc. Okay, example of disaccharides are example. The only important thing I'm writing down here: we have sucrose, we have. Uh, maltose and we have lactose all these one of the component is glucose whether it is sucrose maltose or lactose one of the component is glucose in this but we have two monosaccharides possible one is glucose other one with the name you can understand like if you write sucrose one is glucose other one is fructose sucrose and fructose you can understand it is looks similar name maltose one is glucose other one is glucose itself here galactose one is glucose other one is other lactose other one is galactose similar name you see then in short i have written it right so you should know this that what is the component present in disaccharides tri and tetra are not important we are not going to do this second thing like we should know like how these two molecules are combined which carbon atoms are there in the uh, which are joined between the two like glucose ka what carbon atom fructose what carbon atom have been joined okay so that we'll discuss later but this is what that you need to know the composition of uh, these disaccharides okay monosaccharides you see Uh, it is polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone like i said this one is he polyhydroxy means more number of hydroxy group present but the primary functional group is hydride that's why it is polyhydroxy aldehyde primary functional group is ketone and hence it is polyhydroxy ketone right so if you have this n value what is the possible value of n here please tell me number of carbon atom here in monosaccharides the number of carbon atom yes in monosaccharide the number of carbon atom could be minimum 3 to maximum 9 Right, minimum three to maximum nine total carbon atom. So n value could be n value could be one to seven. So if n value is one here, this is the compound we get. Three carbon atom, so it is aldo triose because we have three carbon atom. Tri. Why aldo? Because aldehyde is the primary functional group. If you have two carbon atom, then it is total four here. N value is two total four here. aldo tetros okay like this we do aldo pentose aldo hexose right aldo hexose is nothing but glucose so this name also you should know it is not written here aldo hexose when n is equals to 4 this is nothing but glucose okay six carbon atom total similarly when you have ketone as the primary functional group then keto triose keto tetrose keto pentose like that okay so if n is equals to 1 here it is keto triose n is equals to 0 it is no n is equals to 0 n is equals to 0 it is keto triose n value could be here from 0 to 6 for it is 0 keto triose it is 1 keto tetrose it is 2 keto pentose okay it is 3 n value 3 keto hexose and keto hexose 
is nothing but fructose. I've done all these things in the class, but if, still if you forget, uh, these things are important. Ketohexose is nothing but fructose. So fructose, the primary functional group is ketone and um, glucose, the primary functional group is aldehyde. Okay, they have asked this name also. Like, what is glucose? Aldohexo. This also they have asked once. Okay, these two names you must remember. Okay, this is the cyclic structure, Haworth structure also we call it. Right, glucose is also known as dextrose. Okay, before going into this, Glucose is also known as dextrose because in nature it exists as the optically active dextrorotatory form, dextrorotatory isomer. Hence, it is. Uh, hence, it is also called dextrose. Okay, found in sweet fruits, whatever sweet fruits you see, in all those glucose are present. Okay. Okay, now the thing is, why this is alpha, what is this is alpha and beta we have, okay? Alpha and beta, it is defined with the reference of a compound called, called glyceraldehyde, okay? So we, we took an example of glyceraldehyde and its uh, formula is this. We have OH on the right, H on the left, CH2OH on the bottom and C double bond OH on the top. This compound is glyceraldehyde. Glyceraldehyde is the smallest unit of carbohydrate. Okay, smallest carbohydrate we have here. Okay. So based on the position of this OH on this carbon, the chiral carbon, the position of OH, we say it is D or uh, or L, correct? D or L. So when OH is on the right side of this carbon atom, then it is D-glyceraldehyde when it is on the right. Similarly, if you draw the another one in which OH is on the left and H is on the right, obviously it is the isomer CH2OH. This we call it as L-glyceraldehyde. glyceraldehyde. D and L we define like this with, re with respect to glyceraldehyde. Okay, OH on the right side of the of the chiral carbon, it is D-glyceraldehyde. Okay. Now, if you talk about glucose here, then we have so many chiral carbons. One, two, three, four chiral carbon we have. Okay, if you look at the structure here, glucose, this one is the structure. One, two, three, four. Four chiral carbon we have. So which carbon we should consider, right? So we consider the carbon atom, which is at the maximum distance from the primary functional group. Primary functional group is aldehyde. It is not uh, alcohol, but it is aldehyde, primary functional group. So chiral carbon, which is at the maximum distance from the primary functional group, which is this carbon. So on this carbon, if OH is on the right, it is D. When OH is on the left, it is L-glucose. Like this with D and L we compare, okay? Now, when you talk about Haworth structure, so what happens in this, you see, the cyclic structure, this lone pair, it attacks onto this carbonyl carbon and shift this electron pair this way. Okay, so this carbon atom, you see, it is sp2 hybridized here. Initially, it was sp2 hybridized, okay? So this attack can be is possible from any side, from the top or from the bottom. Both ways it's possible. So if it is on the top, when which means if uh, like one side attack will leads to OH on the right side and another one will lead to OH on the left side. So if it is OH on the right side, uh, OH is present on the right side, then it is called as alpha D glucose. It is already D glucose because OH is here. Why it is alpha? Because this OH is on the right side, correct? 
So alpha when OH on the right, beta when OH on the left, we have both possibilities possible. Right? Important thing here is write down in solid state, beta form is more stable. Solid state, this is more stable. Beta form. Okay, these two are, if you come, if you consider this one and two, these two are diastereomers of each other. Alpha and beta form are diastereomers of each other. Correct. There's a term here called anomeric carbon. Anomeric carbon is the carbon atom which configures Achha. Anomeric carbon is the carbon which has both OH and OR group attached to it. Like you see, this carbon has one OH and one OR group attached to it. This is the anomeric carbon. This is the anomeric carbon. This carbon, anomeric carbon. This carbon, anomeric carbon. So you see on, the, on this carbon atom, OH is on the right. And on this carbon atom, OH is on the left. So obviously, the configuration of these two carbons are different. So anomers are what? Anomers are the carbohydrates which differs only in the configuration at anomeric carbon. Like this two carbon you see, in this two carbon, the configuration differs only at anomeric carbon. All other carbon atoms, the configuration is same. Hence, these two carbon atoms are what? These two carbon or molecules are anomers to each other. Okay, so understood anomeric carbon is a carbon atom which contains both OH and OR group means ether linkage should be there and hydroxy linkage should be there. Configuration differs at anomeric carbon are called anomers. Okay, so this you see here, it is a cyclic structure. If you observe this, if I number this one, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a cyclic structure we get. And this is what we are talking about here. Each carbohydrate molecules contains both a carbonyl group and a hydroxy group. If these two functional groups are properly positioned in the same molecule, then there can an intramolecular rearrangement forming a cyclic hemiacetal structure. Why it is called it as hemiacetal structure? Because it has both OH and OR group present over here. If both OR group is there, then what is the structure called? If both group are OR, what is the structure called? Acetyl structure, correct? When we have OH and OR present the same carbon, it is hemiacetyl structure. If both are OR, then it is acetyl structure, okay? There are a few things that you must, you know, understand. Okay, Haworth projection, like I said, it is the same thing. We have six member ring carbon atom which we have to represent. I'll show you this here. It is not done. This is a Haworth projection. This was a cyclic structure of this molecule, right? It is ribose formula you should know. It has one carbon less, five carbon atom present and both all the OH on the right side. One second, I forgot to tell you one thing. This kind of question they have asked in NEAT here. If they ask you the config, how do you represent glucose here? Right, like in this one, how do you represent glucose? Right, so primary functional group is on the top, this one. So we'll number the carbon atom as one, it is two, it is three, it is four, five, and six. Okay, so we can write the configuration of all the chiral carbon. Like the second carbon, we have OH on the right side. So it is 2D, third OH on the left, 3L, four OH on the right, 4D, and five OH on the right, 5D. This represents glucose. So if sometimes they give this kind of four options, okay? Just you need to see OH on the right or left. Accordingly, we can say 
डी और एल कॉन्फ़िगरेशन है ओके नाउ हैवर्थ प्रोजेक्शन यू सी वी हैव फाइव कार्बन एटम ओके दिस ओ विल दिस लोन पेयर ऑन दिस ऑक्सीजन अटैक्स ऑन टू दिस कार्बन एटम दिस गोज अप एंड दिस एच विल गेट अटैच ओवर हियर राइट सो विल गेट दिस काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर okay this we call it as d ribose furanose five membered ring okay it is a five membered ring correct okay so in haworth projection what we do There is one more term. See, if you talk about glucose, on the second OH on the right, OH on the left, OH on the left, OH on that. This is not glucose, right? In glucose, this OH is on the right side. We have, okay? This is some other molecule. We can draw the cyclic structure this way, and then this. Okay, the Haworth structure of glucose is based on. a molecule called pyrene okay is based on a molecule called pyrene pyrene the formula is this and haworth structure is based on this only of glucose this is pyrene okay and the structure of glucose have our the structure if you see you'll get this okay if it is alpha then oh will be on the top h will be here it is a first carbon atom second third fourth fifth and sixth oh on the top it is it means it is on the right it is a alpha form of it then we'll write down oh on the bottom then oh on the top alternate then oh on the bottom and then the last one we have ch2 oh on the top right oh on the top yes oh on the top it is a beta form yeah that's right beta form it is okay so when you have this two things here you have to keep in mind that when this oxygen this position is a first carbon 1 2 3 4 5 6 carbon atom is not the part of the ring that is one thing second thing on the first carbon if you change the configuration means when you have oh on the top then it is the beta form we have beta form similarly if you write this oh bottom and h on the top then it is alpha form right like i said in solid state beta form is more stable because when you place oh over here on the bottom and h here on the top then we have more repulsion in these two hydroxy group right and because of this repulsion the structure is unstable right hence the stable structure is this one when oh both oh on the first and second carbon are opposite to each other correct this repulsion when we have oh here this repulsion we call it as diaxial rip i'll draw that structure also otherwise you will get confused in this only so another one the alpha form would be this we have oh on the bottom h on the top then oh on the bottom h on the top oh on the top h on the bottom on the bottom h on the top and then we have h over here h over here and ch2 oh on the top okay you see here oh on the first carbon atom it is down so it is alpha form Okay, alpha form. In alpha form, you see 
we have this two OH, obviously we have more repulsion than this OH and this OH over here. This repulsion, we call it as diaxial repulsion. The technical term we have here, diaxial repulsion. And because of this only, the alpha form is slightly lesser stable than the beta form. Okay, since this structure is given on the reference of pyrene, hence the name of this two structure is glucopyranose. So when they have the, given this structure, then you should consider, when they have given this structure, then you should consider the Havort structure of glucose, not the simple one. Okay. Muta rotation, important on this also, they have asked question. When an open chain monosaccharide cycle cyclizes to a furanose or a pyranose form, a new chiral center at the, car at the carbonyl carbon is created. The two diastereomers produced are called anomers. We have discussed it. So what happens in this? This one, furanose, we haven't done. I'll discuss this. Just give me one minute. After this, we'll discuss. So it is a spontaneous change in the specific rotation. Okay. So we have alpha D glucose and and beta D glucose. So what happens if you have alpha D glucose, alpha D GL right down here, if you dissolve this in water, okay. So it converts into D glucose simply, open chain. This was the cyclic chain because we have alpha over here, D glucose. And when this again try to form the bond, the cyclic structure, then this could be beta as well as alpha also. Both ways possible. If it attacks from the top, when OH on the right, it is alpha. When OH on the left, it is beta. Right. So after D glucose, we can get beta D also over here. So basically in solution, we have both form exist. Alpha and beta, both form exist. If you look at the specific rotation of this, it is somewhere around 111 degree. And for this one, it is around 19, 19.5 or 19 degree, you can say. It's a specific rotation. So this two exist in equilibrium and the equilibrium value of this specific rotation is 15.5 degree. Right. So what is muta rotation? It is the spontaneous change in the specific rotation before the equilibrium established. A spontaneous change in the specific rotation. Alpha is converting into beta, beta is converting into alpha. So this is spontaneous change, continuous change that we have. This phenomenon is muta rotation. Right. So what is written here, you see? If either alpha or beta form of glucose is dissolved in water, the optical rotation changes eventually, a value of this is obtained, thus alpha form changes to beta form or vice versa, and eventually a solution containing 36% of alpha form and 64% of beta form is obtained. This phenomenon is known as muta rotation. So all these spontaneous changes that is happening before the equilibrium established is called muta rotation. Okay, so like I said, uh, glucopyranose is based on pyrene, the molecule that we take, you know, to represent the structure of uh, glucopyranose. Similarly, we also have defined the Havorth structure of fructose. And Havorth structure of fructose is defined by a molecule called furan, okay? So if you look at this molecule, furan, and hence we call it as fructofuranose. Furan, the molecule is this. This one. Okay. Based on this, the structure of Havertz structure of fructose has been given. And hence the name of the structure is fructofuranose. 
Okay, so beta rotation is done. You will have, you will get some questions also in this numerical question. We'll see that. We'll see that after this discussion. Okay, what is reducing and non-reducing sugar? Yes. They are attached by both are anomeric carbon, then it's non-reducing because there's no group which can reduce. They attach at both anomeric carbon. Yes. Two monomers, like you can say two monosaccharides, they combine to form a disaccharides. Correct. So we can have any carbon atom attached of the two monosaccharides. So reducing sugar is the one in which, first of all, definition of reducing sugar is which can reduce tollens and tollens reagent and failing solution. Okay. Non-reducing sugar, right? Non-reducing sugar is the one which cannot reduce these reagents, tollens reagent and failing solution. Right. All those molecules or carbohydrates in which there are free aldehyde or ketone group present, free aldehyde or ketone group present are called reducing sugars. Okay. Basically in which anomeric carbons are not involved are called reducing sugars. Right. So reducing sugars are easily oxidized to give carboxylic acid. Okay, they reduce Tollings reagent. Here it is written, you see. They reduce Tollings reagent. They reduce, uh, you know, felling solution, right? Benedict reagent or Benedict solution to red precipitate of cuprous oxide. So all those carbohydrates which can reduce these reagents are called reducing reagent, reducing sugars. All aldoses are reducing sugars but some ketoses are reducing sugars as well. For example, fructose reduces Tollens reagent. Even it contains no aldehyde group. We know the reason, the tautomerism and all the mechanism we have. But fructose has have the functional group that is ketone. Still, it can reduce Tollens reagent. We already know aldehyde can reduce Tollens reagent. Okay, but fructose can do because of that uh, equilibrium, we'll discuss that later. This occurs because fructose is readily isomerized to an aldose in basic solution. This is the example given over here. It is fructose, double bond O, right? Isomers of this, you'll get this tautomerize. And then again, this converts into this molecule, CHOS, the double bond comes over here and H will go on to this carbon atom. Okay, you see here, this group you see. It is C, double bond C, H, OH. The top two, this is OH, let it be as it is, and other things we have here. So what happens, this pi will shift here, tautomerism, and this H will come over here in basic medium. So you'll get CHOH here. Okay, CHOH here. On the top, we have CHO. You see this keto, converts into aldehyde finally. And when the aldehyde forms, it will, it can reduce the Tollens reagent solution, correct? That's why we usually say all ketone cannot reduce Tollens reagent except fructose, okay? Because of this tautomerism here. Okay, this is the reaction we have. So reducing sugar, you have to keep in mind, if the molecule has free aldehyde or ketone group, then it is reducing sugars. Important one, all monosaccharides, you can say. Monosaccharides in which we have aldehyde as a major functional group. In ketone, we have only one, we can think of fructose here. Right? So all aldoses are reducing sugars here. Many a times they have asked this question, which one is reducing or non-reducing sugar? Now, these are the few reaction-based, uh, you know, uh, thing we have, like what happens in what reaction that you must understand here. Okay. So, uh, sugar is completely degraded 
with HIO4. You have to keep this in mind that when we use HIO4, all the CHO molecule converts into HCOH, CSTO, CH2OH converts into aldehyde HCHO. If you have carbonyl group, converts into CO2, cerebral bond. Right? Based on these, we have this reaction given. Okay? CH2OH, you see, it converts into CHO. This is CHO. This is CHO. So at CHO, we got CHOH we have. CHOH converts into COOH. We have CO group converts into CO2. Okay? With HIO4. Strong oxidizing agent. Phenyl hydrazine. One minute for you to go back. Huh, one second. Sir, hadn't we earlier seen that HIO4 was only for consecutive diols? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So what happened, Richard? Sir, earlier, like it only had ketones or alcohol chapter, we saw HIO4 was only for uh, consecutive diones or triones. Over here, we can do with uh, aldehyde also, sir. Yes, it's possible. No? It's consecutive diol only. We have like this now. OH, like OH, OH. But it's, it's a strong reducing agent, oh, sorry, oxidizing agent. So it can convert CHO also, aldehyde also, it's possible. Okay, okay. So it's fine, we are happening over here. But with aldehyde also, it's possible. It converts first, like aldehyde, it will oxidize into acid. Alcohol, obviously, we know it converts into acid. So it converts into CHOH also. Like this is for fructose voila thing because the second carbon you'll get CHOH. So whether you have aldehyde or alcohol, this aldehyde will convert into HC. This is just to you, for you to memorize mechanism because we are not doing. So if you have CH2OH present, then you'll get an aldehyde oxidation. If you have CHO acid, CHOH acid, if you have keto, then carbon dioxide you'll get. Okay, sir. So okay. in the Havoc structure, it doesn't open that oxygen bond. Also. That will happen in solution. Yes, sir. But if they give the Havoc structure reaction, then only uh, three of the things will react. Also. Three of the things, as in which one? So only the second, third, and fourth carbon will react. The other two will still stay. Yeah, you're talking about with HIO4, no? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, right, right. OK. OK, so in this one, you see, um, phenyl hydrazine. On this, they have asked question in JE also, like in previous year, phenyl hydrazine reaction. I have done this reaction in the uh, class also. If you just go back and check your notes, I've done this reaction. With mechanism, I have done, OK? So in phenyl hydrazine, what happens? What is the name of that reaction we call? Something formation, if you remember. What is that? Remember that OSA zone formation. Yes, it is OSA zone formation. So important reaction it is OSA zone formation. Sugars form characteristics OSA zones with phenyl hydrazine. Okay. So when you have phenyl hydrazine. Uh, you have to just uh, you know memorize this that what happens here we'll get this c double bond n nhph c double bond n nhph and this lower part will be as it is okay here here they have written this oh this side this is for what this is for ketose so this is for just a second we have this there's some other compound they have taken, not a problem. So what we need to do, when you take a break glucose here, then the first two carbon atom 
we have discussed the mechanism tautomerism takes place and finally with glucose you will get with phenyl hydrazine the name of the compound is glucosazone in glucosazone what happens first two carbon atom will have double bond n nhph h2o will go out along with h2o what forms along with h2o along with h2o we get this three bonds is let it be along with h2o we'll get primary like we'll get aniline phenyl with nh2 this is one compound we get we also get ammonia we also get h2o in this reaction okay if you look at the structure with glucose and fructose since the reaction takes place at first two carbon atom and if you see the difference in the structure of glucose and fructose it is only at the uh, first and second carbon atom this part from the third onwards it is exactly same in glucose and fructose since the reaction takes place here is same so the formula of glucosazone and fructosazone is exactly similar there's no change in that correct if you take fructose we'll say fructosazone if you take glucose we'll take glucosazone okay this is the uh, important thing we have both have the same structure because the last lower part is exactly same okay oxidation reaction you see we'll take aldose this one we have it's a general thing they have written so what happens choh will be as it is with b bromine water but cho will get oxidized into coh okay bromine water is what it is a mild oxidizing agent of what right bromine water is a mild oxidizing agent not very strong right so this will oxidize aldehyde into acid hno3 is a strong oxidizing agent and it will oxidize both this alcohol here in the bottom and cho into acid name of the compound is aldaric acid here this is aldonic acid okay have done all these reactions in the class as well so you can go through it okay so next is in this one i have to discuss disaccharide this is important and on this you get many questions in the exam Okay, so what is important here? You see, disaccharides like we know, disaccharides are made up of the combination of two monosaccharides. So, which all carbon atoms are involved in this, you know, combination? Like you see, if you talk about glycosidic acetal bond, we have here. So, OH and OH both combines. H2O molecules eliminates, and both monosaccharides are combined with a oxygen bond here, ethyl bond here. We can say. Okay, so in this one, you see, we have this molecule given, right? If you talk about because this is, um, this is some other example we have. The important one is this. I'll tell you. when you talk about sucrose right i won't write down the entire structure we know sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose so glucose and fructose we also have this kind of bond present involved in this bonding that is important here to memorize okay so in glucose and fructose for glucose we have C one carbon atom involves C one, and from fructose we have C two carbon atom involves. So what we say, sucrose is formed by the condensation of alpha D glucopyranose, glucopyranose, and fructose we say beta D fructofuranose. 
So you can draw the Haworth structure of these two. H2O you have to eliminate out and you will get the combined structure similar to this kind of, that structure is called sucrose, right? So which carbon atom is involved here? C1 of glucose and C2 of this, of fructose, right? So here what happens, you see, uh, this bond, C1 and C4 we have, the bond is called glycosidic bond, can be either alpha or beta. The end monosaccharides on the right is known as glycone, which is the common disaccharides are as follows. Cellobios, it is not important, okay, in which we have one for glycosidic linkage. But here in sucrose, which is important here, we have glycosidic linkage present between C1 and C2 carbon atom. And hence we say fructose forms, sorry, sucrose forms by the glycosidic linkage between C1 and C2 carbon atom of glucose and fructose. Okay. And this is structure by the combination of this the structure that we get, we call it as acetal structure. Acetal structure. So glycosidic linkage present between C1 and C2 carbon atom. This is important and you must memorize this. Okay. Next is maltose. In maltose, we have glucopyranose we take and glucopyranose. Two different structures we have, but the bond that combines here, it is... C1 of gluco, glucopyranose, C1 of glucopyranose and C4 of the other glucose unit because both are glucose only. We know maltose are made up of two glucose unit, G plus G. So first ka C1 and second ka C4. C1 and C4, we have glycosidic linkage present here. So H2O eliminates this kind of bond is present. Now this one is reducing sugar or not. Could you tell me? This one is reducing sugar or not? It is the reducing sugar. Why it is the reducing sugar? Because in which one of the carbon atom which contains OH and OR group is not involved in the bonding. See, this one is OH and OR group. It is involved in bonding. But for this molecule, this carbon atom which contains OH and OR group is not involved in bonding. And when this carbon atom is free, it is a reducing sugar. If you look at the example of the previous one, which I have taken sucrose, in sucrose what happens, both C1 and C2 carbons are involved, right? So both molecule of glucose and fructose, anomeric carbon is involved in bonding in sucrose. If you draw the structure, you will see Anomeric carbon is involved in bonding and hence sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. But this anomeric carbon is free here. Anyone we want, anomeric carbon free. So it is a reducing sugar. This value is not required, just let it be. You just need to know what is the composition of this two glucose unit, which carbon atom is involved, C1, C4. We have glycosidic linkage between the two. And it is a, and it is a reducing sugar because it um, the anomeric carbon is free. And when it is reducing, it shows meter rotation. This property you should. Know. Just a second, I'm coming.
Oh, I was on mute. Okay. So we have C4 of glucopyranose and C1 of C1 of galactopyranose. We take beta form of it, glucose here, and beta form of galactose here. Both beta form we have. Right? In the previous one, we take alpha form of glucose. Maltose will both will have the alpha form. It is a beta form, C1 and C4 carbon. C1 of galactose and C4 of glucose is involved, right? Now, again, you see for glucose, C4 carbon is involved. So obviously C1 carbon is left here. It is not involved in the reaction, correct? Hence, it is again a reducing sugar, right? It is a reducing sugar. And when it is reducing sugar, it shows meter rotation. Okay, so all the three different saccharides, you should know where we have the glycosidic linkage present, which carbon atom involved, and whether it is reducing or not. Okay, a few more uh, things we have left into this, and then we'll go to the numericals. Okay, sucrose we have discussed already, uh, glucose and uh, uh, fructose, C1, C2 carbon involves, and it is a non-reducing sugar. Okay, we have discussed this already. Next, we have polysaccharides. What is polysaccharides? It is a polymer of monosaccharides. It is the polymer of monosaccharides. Okay, example, we have starch, cellulose. Okay. So what happens in this? First of all, you see, these are non-reducing sugars. Key point, do not exhibit muta rotation. Cellulose and starch are the two common polysaccharides we have. Cellulose formed from D-glucose via 1,4-beta glycosidic linkage. Okay, cellulose is formed from D-glucose via one for glycosidic linkage. So first and fourth carbon are involved in glycosidic linkage. It is non-reducing all these property you remember. Okay, beta form, keep that in mind. Beta glycosidic linkage, where beta glucose we are taking here. Starch. The starch we have, one for alpha glycosidic linkage. Okay, present in wheat, rice, potatoes, etc. Okay. So starch has two components. We'll, we'll discuss that a bit later. Two component it has. That is amylose and amylopectin. Okay. So sugar can be separated in a cold water soluble fraction called amylopectin and a cold water insoluble fraction called amylose. So what is the property here you have to memorize? That amylose is water insoluble. This one. Amylose is water insoluble. Fraction, you don't uh, like just again ignore that. But water insoluble, amylopectin is water soluble. Okay, these two things you must remember. Okay, amylose is a straight chain. We know amylose is a linear polymer. Right, straight chain, alpha D glucosic. I'll write down a few properties here. What amylopectin it says insoluble. NCRT Vikas, could you check once quickly? Sir, I checked, sir. It says amylose is soluble and amylopectin is insoluble. Amylopectin, achha, okay. So we'll follow NCRT. We'll follow NCRT then. Just maybe some, uh, you know, correction will be here. Error will be here in this PDF. Possible, okay. So we'll follow NCRT. So amylopectin, guys, just to correct it here, it is water insoluble. Water insoluble. Uh, do you have the note that I have done in the class? Check that also once. 
बॉन्डिंग वी हैव बिटवीन सी वन एंड सी फोर कार्बन आइटम सी वन एंड सी फोर ग्लाइकोसिडिक लिंकेज वी हैव प्रेजेंट and it is alpha d glucose we are taking for this because we have n number of monomer all are alpha d glucose right repeating unit also sometimes they ask what is the repeating unit here repeating unit here if this oxygen you are taking in then this will be out of the repeating unit this is the repeating unit we have you see this is getting repeated so sometimes they also ask you what is the repeating unit we have important okay amylose is this amylopectin is highly branched polymer this one is linear one after the other you see it is arranged but amylopectin is highly branched polymer it is composed of highly branched complex structure composed of alpha d glucose again in which c1 and c4 carbons are involved in glycosidic linkage insoluble in water we have already done okay and number of units here is around 300 to 600 give not important just to ignore this okay this is you see because we say it is a highly branched so if you talk about the linear one then c1 c4 carbon is involved in this like we have in amylose in branching what happens c6 and c4 carbon is involved right so write down in branching c6 and c4 car uh, carbon atoms of various units are involved branching C4 and C6 carbon of various units are involved. Cross linking will be there between C4 and C6 carbon. Okay, so we don't have much to understand here. These are the informations of these, uh, you know, polysaccharides that we should understand or we should memorize. Okay, now we see this question. try this one by one this chapter is done acetylation of aldohexose with excess of this i have done this reaction in the class
Done. All. Okay, so the first one, 34th, we are doing acetylation of aldohexose. So acetylation gives you what? Aldohexose is, is glucose, which is CHO, OH, OH on the left, on the right, on the right and CH2OH. H here, H here, H and H here. Okay. So the reaction we have aldohexose with AC2OH. So reaction is this, we have uh, CH3, C double bond O, O C double bond O C S three, right? So all these O H converts into O A C and C S three C O H forms. So the product would be C H O, and here we have C H O A C four and C H two O A C, right? All these H will take this from CS3COH and CS3CO will get attached to it, okay? So this is the product we get. What is the option given here? OAC we are getting, okay? Penta acetate of aldehyde. Are we getting penta? Yes, we are getting penta acetate, four and plus one, five. So we are getting penta acetate of aldehydes. Answer will be option D, 34th one. <laughs> Furanose and paranose are respectively contains furanose and paranose, five membered and six member ring. Okay, six membered and five, five and seven, seven and six and seven. Option A is correct in 35th one. The specific rotation of alpha and beta anomers of glucose is this. If the specific rotation of the equilibrium mixture is this, then the mole fraction of alpha and beta anomers. How do we do it? If one is X, other one would be one minus X. So X into, how did you do? X into one, one, two plus one minus X into one, nine equals to this. Have you done this? Yes. What is the answer you are getting? So C. C, that's right, okay. Mole fraction is given. You see, specific rotation of alpha and beta anomers is given. Uh, is this equilibrium also mole fraction of alpha and beta? So one you assume as x, so other one would be one minus x mole fraction. So x into its uh, specific rotation one one twelve plus one minus x into its specific rotation ninety equals to the equilibrium one. Answer is option C in this one. Similarly, it's thirty seven also or what? Uh, it's exactly the same, no? 37, what is the answer? B you are getting? Yes. If you want me to do, just let me know. Okay, both questions are exactly the same. Okay, and these kind of questions nowadays they are asking in need also. Okay, treatment of gl glucitol with uh, per iodic acid. Just now we did glucitol with per iodic acid. What happens in this? CH2OH, CHOH, and CH2OH. So all these bond, you continue to break this bond, you need to break this bond, and it forms HCHO with this, HCHO with this, and four CHOOH convert into COOH. Two HCHO formaldehyde and four HCOH, option B is correct. Treatment of glucaric acid. 
with HiO4. Glucaric acid gives you what? COH, we won't have any effect. One second, we have CHOH, CHOH, and CHOH said we have. Okay, so we have four CHOH we have. So the last two will convert into CHO and the in between two will convert into COH. See, in this one, I'll write down this molecule as this, this one, 39th one. The molecule is H. O O C C H O H C H O H and we have C O O H. This bond you need to break. So from this, this C H O H converts into C H O. This gives you COOH here, two, and this gives you again CHO. So one product would be COOH, CHO, two of this molecule and two of COOH we get. So we'll get uh, two of this, two of option C we are getting here. Okay. Last one, treatment of glucaric acid consumes. Have done this reaction. What is the answer, 40th one? Glucaric acid with, um, obviously, HIO4 reaction we have. So one, two, and three molecules we have. Option three is correct. See, in one, type, one question only, they can frame the question in different way, okay? If you have done this, you can do this also, right? It's the same thing. Okay, next question you see. Take care of alpha and beta as well. So when we have both alpha and beta, which one do we put? No, we have done this, no, like, uh, uh, you should know this, what is the unit we have? Like, what is the monomer we are using, monosaccharides we are using? Yes, sir. like, I mean, like, if one monomer is alpha, other is beta, which one do we put? Huh, so we cannot change it because it is already mentioned, no, like, if I tell you, uh, if you, Think of sucrose, right? Sucrose, what is the monomer we have in sucrose? So alpha, alpha or beta form. Alpha glucose, beta fructose. That you cannot change. Alpha of glucose and beta of fructose. Like you see, 44th one, we have alpha glucose and acha. You are saying only one thing is given here, right? So we yes. have one and four. One and four, one and two we have. No, in sucrose we have one and two because it's non-reducing sugar. So one and two glycosidic linkage. Now, what is your doubt? 44th is simple, simple. it's D option. No, sir, I mean like they're given beta alpha for the other options. So, like. so what are the so glycosides? Ah, so what? 
So like in the glycosidic linkage, whether it is a alpha or beta. No, glycosidic okay. linkage is not alpha or beta. It is the monosaccharides that we are taking alpha form of that or beta form of that. Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're alpha or beta, alpha or beta is because of the monosaccharides that we are taking. Like, for example, you see, if you talk about sucrose, right? In sucrose, we'll take alpha form of glucopyranose and beta form of fructofuranose. Right. So that alpha and beta is associated with the monosaccharides that we are taking. Glycosidic linkage is just the bond between a carbon atom, uh, you know, which contains hydroxy group, means two carb molecule we have. That is what the glycosidic linkage is. So here you see the first question that you have, maltose. Maltose is both glucose. What form alpha or beta? Maltose is alpha, right? Both, Both alpha. alpha we are taking. So 43rd one, the answer will be option A. If suppose you, have, you must be like confusing, like if alpha and beta both feel, like in case of sucrose, one is alpha and one is beta. It's given, right? So they haven't mentioned, right? You see here in sucrose, we have one, two glycosidic linkage, right? So one, two glycosidic linkage we have here, beta it is given. And it is just one, two glycosidic linkage we have here, right? So it's not like we have only beta in monomer. So we won't go with this. Here we have what? Maltose, we have only alpha in the monosaccharides. So we can go with option A, it is alpha glycosidic. Sir, so I think on the slide it was written beta. I'm not sure if I took it down wrong. Beta for which one? So for maltose, I think it was written 1,4 beta glycoside on the slide. Achha, just a second. Oh, maltose you're saying i'll check one second should not be beta In this one? Yes, sir. At the top, it's written beta. It might be misprinted. One fourth beta glycoside. Beta should, it should be alpha, I guess. Achha, I'll, I'll, I'll cross check this. Just give me some time. I'll cross check this. I'll cross check this in the break. Okay. We won't waste yes, time. Yes, sir. Okay. Maltose. Achha, I'll check that. Wait. Okay. So next is uh, uh, this we have done. So first one, I'll cross check this, whether it is alpha or beta, I guess it should be alpha. Okay, but we'll cross check this between A and B we will cross check. Okay. So 45th one invert sugar is sucrose. Sucrose, we know it is a non-reducing sugar. Just now we discuss this. Next one you see we have, we'll have to finish this one before the break, yeah. One second. Simple one, tell me. Maldos is formed by the union of Touch down. Two form of glucose. Option C. So cross we have one glucose, one fructose. 
and in galactose we have one molecule of glucose and one molecule of lactose option b okay simple one okay fine so we are done with this uh, uh, biomolecules next we have to start after the break i'll check that question in the break we'll discuss it after that and we'll start uh, polymers after the break okay and probably polymers also we can finish and then we will move into uh, alcohol chapter okay we'll do that fine so we'll take a break now we'll resume at 625 625 we'll resume guys take a break 